Audi. Today's video is about using Open Drone Map or ODM with X4D to fly on autonomous drone mission using a Mavic 2 Zoom. I've pre-set up the uh, X4D mission uh, using the mapping software or the aerial satellite that's available with it um, and uh, we'll compare the results and I'll hopefully show you those on QGIS and uh, Mesh Lab as well. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I've arrived at the area we want to survey. There's two spots that we like to check. And the first one is a little pond or a lake that we found on Google. Interestingly, doesn't have water. <laughs> the other thing I have to be mindful of is people that are around. So I've come a little earlier um, and as you can see behind me there's a, a lady there with a baby out for a stroll so I have to be mindful of that. Okay so the second area is just up here. And the reason I've chosen this area is it's got a little bit of structure. So what we're after seeing is whether ODM um, can pick up the 3D dimensions. Today, rather than just flying a single grid pattern, I'm going to fly two. The second one will be at around about 20 odd degrees, and that's what the ODM website recommends. So this is the second site. that we can work off of plus some structure as well so as in playground equipment and tables and things like that so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out too just going to do a quick walk around of the survey area and make sure that the survey area is within the polygon area or the grid area that I've selected having some trouble with the Control Plus DJI plugin. This is something that Pix4D uses to connect to your drone. You can see it's trying to connect here, connecting, and then it disconnects. So it just can repeatedly does that. Um, so I had to basically restart uh, Pix4D. Um, and when you restart it, um, go into your actual project and look at your project list here and you can see there's a green circle on my uh, polygon area, my grid area and that means it's not connected it should be a, a drone icon what I found to fix it was I had to always open the control DJI plugin when I connected to the drone so and you can see now when I go back into the project you'll see the drone icon Zoom's ready to go, the second Mavic 2 is almost ready to go, the second one will be filming the first one. But one tip is I like to start my missions with the actual drone in the air, that way you can go straight to the start point.
So run ODM, I'm running it through Docker. Um, the computer I'm using is a MacBook Pro, uh, which is quite beefy. Um, but the first thing we do with Docker is actually give it some more resources. Um, a few times I've run Docker and partway through it just stops working. Um, and the error message doesn't really give you too much of a clue but generally through some experimentation I found out that um, Docker didn't have enough resources to process all the data. So ODM is quite uh, resource hungry. So anyway, the first thing I do is go in and particularly give it some more RAM. One thing is don't forget to put your, your settings back afterwards, otherwise Docker will be consuming all your resources. So what I do is um, firstly, delete all the old images out of the file. Um, Docker runs basically on a, a named set of folders. Um, and then what I do is I copy the images from where I have them stored and paste them into um, the images folder. So there they're pasted into the folder, so we're ready to process. I have a command and I'll put this in below in the video. Uh, I store my command in a text file. Once you learn the various commands um, and what it does, you can adjust that to what suits yourself. We run Docker through the command line. Um, I just paste the command into the uh, terminal tool, I should say, and then off it goes. And you can see that the folders are being created. I've um, got Finder running in the background. It basically loads the files and begins to process them. So it runs for a little while, and then it gets to this particular point here, and I thought it had stopped and crashed and so forth, but it's just doing a fair bit of um, processing in the background. The line at the bottom there is uh, reporting that it's uh, reconstructing all views. Um, you have to wait a while and don't be tempted to crash out and then a whole lot of other processing occurs and you end up with the ODM and then you know that it's processed. You then need to really confirm that it's finished so the folders have been created here and they're all prefixed with ODM underscore but it's certainly worth checking to see if there, um, if each of these folders has data in them. Uh, there are times when certain parts of the process haven't run and the data doesn't get created. So just a quick check, make sure that the data is in there. So once we've confirmed the data is there, what I normally do is copy that data into a different location, but here we're gonna have a look at the data using firstly QGIS so I'm going to add the raster layer, the GeoTIFF, so that we can view it here. So if I have a look at the orthophoto folder, I can see the TIFF file in there. So we will add that to QGIS. Add new and close. And there you have it. There are a few holes we can see here. If I zoom in, just picking some features at random. You can see that there's some straight lines, but there's also some stretching. And I have a look at the play equipment, which is one of the things that we wanted. Um, it basically comes out pretty good. Um, so if you were doing asset management and you wanted to heads up digitize on that, you would get a you know a reasonable sort of outcome from that. The other thing we can do is see how it is located. So the easiest thing to do is add Google Satellite. GGIS makes this nice and easy. Zoom to the layer. Then we can see how my new image is lined up with Google Earth. So um, we can see there is some misalignment compared to Google Earth, but um, the thing we shouldn't assume is that Google is correct and our layer isn't correct. Um, and the biggest benefit you can see there is that the resolution of the new image is um, quite significantly different. Here we're going to use MeshLab. We're going to have a look at the object file that is created. 
the object file which is the geo.object is the one I've selected and chosen in this instance takes a couple of seconds to load but once it's loaded we see something similar to the two-dimensional view in QJS however this once we zoom in a little bit we can see that it's actually a 3D model um, there are a few holes and bits and pieces in it and we could do some measurements off of this but yeah it's a um, pretty good view of the 3D world Next we want to compare how the data um, aligns. So the original intent of the project was to fly two missions, one at 20 degrees to the other, and see if the extra imagery, once processed, was better. So here we've got all of the files and this is basically two lots of imagery we can see a few holes but the single run the single message uh, mission does have some holes but it has a few less and if we open up the double mission we can see a little bit of misalignment below it's not significant. Um, if we open the measuring tool, we can get a rough idea that so that is around about 30 centimeters in difference. So that's just a vertical one. Uh, I could probably make one of the layers a little more invisible so we could pick points on top of it. Um, and I think the horizontal difference is a little bit different. So next I thought I'd have a look at the table that I was working on. So this is the single image. The lines are quite straight. It looks okay. There's a bit of smearing in the images just below it. When I go to the double image though, it's, those lines are not so straight. This tree here looks a bit different and it's got a much larger hole there. So I don't know what causes that. Um, but the images, or sorry, the features around it are not too bad in terms of what they look like. But the single certainly looks better, visually anyway. So the play equipment is something we were really interested in um, at the start of this. So if I turn the single layer on and off, we can see that alignment or that misalignment is sort of like in the southeastern quarter. So, um, but fundamentally, the both of the single and double images are similar. The bridge is a bit more interesting. The single mission images, the lines are not so straight, and there's a bit more smearing. And the double mission images, the line is a little bit straighter, a little hole there, but um, a bit of smearing, but fundamentally just slightly visually better. One really interesting area was this section here. So in the single image we can see a bin, but we can see this really stretched looking um, tree. But if we turn that tree off, sorry, if we turn this single mission layer off, we can see this other item that's not picked up at all. So the double mission images pick this item up and, and it looks like the tree is not there. But over here, this, this is really distorted and quite strange. And I don't know what would cause that. So there you have it. That project was about using Open Drone Map to process two sets of images of missions flown in one area and the missions were flown at around about 20 degrees to each other as as recommended by ODM. Uh, for me I didn't see a massive improvement and in some ways there was times when the single mission seemed to process the images slightly better. 
in future I think I'll probably muck around more with overlap and uh, flying heights and speed and things like that um, rather than doing two missions and processing twice as many photos but all in all uh, very impressed with ODM it's 3d images uh, it even produces stuff that we didn't look at like point clouds and things like that so I certainly will see some benefits in it so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it was informative see you next time